Today, I will guide you through the creation of a WordPress website utilizing the full site editor and the plugin called Create Block Team. Join me as we build every section of the website from scratch. We will build the home page, contact page, blog post page, and a simple 404 page. Now, it's important to note that this video is packed with ingenious hacks to help us achieve our goals. While everything functions flawlessly, it's essential to understand that there are certain limitations when it comes to customizing Gutenberg blocks and controlling responsive web design behavior. Hey, welcome everybody and let's get started. For today's video, I'm going to be using Laragon in order to get WordPress installed on my machine. Make sure that you start Apache and MySQL. From here, right click and then go to Quick App and then WordPress. Give it a name, FSC Services and press OK. This should take a couple of seconds in order to get the latest WordPress downloaded and installed for me. We can now visit the website using this URL. As you can see, we have the standard WordPress installation here, and I'm just going to do the default English United States. Then for the site name, I'm going to call mine FSC services. Username is going to be admin. Password is going to be password. As I'm developing locally and I'm not going to be publishing this website, that's absolutely fine. In this case, I will confirm the weak password and I will put my email. Cool. The last thing that we need to do inside here is install WordPress. All right, now that we have WordPress installed, let's log in, admin, password, and remember me. Perfect. From here, let's update absolutely everything starting from WordPress. So please update now. I think that's done. Then let's do the plugins, update all plugins. Then let's click update again, scroll down, update all themes, and we should be good to go. From here, the first thing that I want to do is change some of the website settings. So let's go to settings, general, and from here, you can update your site title, tagline, email, and so on. Let's go to reading. And from here, because we're going to be developing a website instead of a blog, we need to change the home page to a static page. So click on this and then select your home page. When we installed WordPress, this created a sample page. So let's select that. This is located in the pages. And now we just need to press save changes. For the permalinks from here, if you wish, we can make them a little bit more friendly. So for example, let's just choose post name. Of course, this is up to you. You can put block before this or whatever, but I'm just going to keep it simple. And in fact, let's just choose this and put it as block. We'll see whether this works later on. So that's going to be fine. And then let's save changes. From here, let's add a few demo pages just so we have something to work with for our menu later on. So pages, we already have the sample page. So I'm going to change this to home. Update. Let's go back. For some reason, we're getting a privacy policy page now as default. That's interesting. Let's add a couple of more pages. So add new. About us. I will change the URL to about the permalink and publish. Let's go back. Let's create a few more services. Publish. Let's create a few more. How it works. Publish. Rates. Publish. And the last one is going to be contact. Publish. Let's rephrase this and you can see all of the pages that we have in here. Let's do the same for post. So I'm going to go to post and from here, let's edit the hello world. Let's make a few demo ones. So exploring the most common capillary trends, la la la. Future image, I will drag something from my assets here. Obviously, make sure that you optimize your images and you put all text. I'm going to set this as featured image and update. Let's do two more blog posts. How to fix your sync. For this, I'm going to drag another page. I'm going to drag another image. Set it here. Let's add some lorem ipsum as well. I forgot to do that. So I'm going to go back and add a little bit of lorem ipsum. Now, this one already had some. And let's add one more. So lorem ipsum here. 
I'm Rupert, cheap plumbing services, and let's add one more image. I don't have another image like that, so I'm gonna say cheap painting. Something like that. Let's refresh here. And now that we have a couple of pages and we have a couple of posts, let's go to plugins and let's install a plugin which is gonna allow me to upload SVG, SVGs, and this is for my logo mainly. So add new SVG. And the one that I'm going to install is going to be Safe SVG. Install this one, activate the plugin. And now if I go to Media, I should be able to drag all of my images for this tutorial, including SVGs, so it'll make it easier later on. So I have my logo in here, it's kind of hard to see, but go through your images, make sure that you optimize them, add alternative text and so on. Now let's go back to Plugins, click Add New and look for Create Block Theme. This is the plugin that we want by wordpress.org. So let's install it. Also activate it. And this plugin is going to allow us to add fonts from Google or local font. It's going to allow us to create a theme super quickly and also export it. First of all, if we go under appearance, make sure that you have a full site editing theme selected such as the 2023. So you can get the editor because if you have a classic theme selected, you might not get this option in here. Now that we have the create block theme plugin installed, if you go under appearance and then create block theme, from here we can create a blank theme. So click create blank theme, give it a name. So FSC services, give it a short description, URL, author, ready, uh, author, URL, Screenshot, we can upload, it's 1200 by 900, recommended. So I'm gonna upload one. And here it is. And then once you're done, select your theme tags, add custom tags if you wish to. And once you're done, click generate. Here we go, all blank theme has been created. Go to appearance. And from here, you'll see all brand new theme. Let's activate it. If we visit the website super quickly, I will hold control to go on a new tab. You will see that we have a brand new website. And by the way, I am zoomed in a little bit just so you can see when I'm inside the WordPress menu. So I'll be zooming in and out from time to time. Let's go back under appearance and then manage theme font. From here, we can either add Google font. So if we click this super quickly, you'll see that we can select many Google fonts from here. But for some reason, the one that I wanted, which is also a Google font, is not inside here. I'm not sure why, but the one that I wanted is, if you go to fonts.google.com and if you search for Wix, for example, this is the one that I wanted. And what you can do is you can download the, the full font family from here. It will download a zip and then we can upload the font from here. So if I go back, instead of adding it from Google, I'm going to be adding it locally at local font. There are a few extensions supported as you can see. So let's choose my font and this is going to be under assets, static, and here is my font. So I have the both, extra both, medium, regular, and semi both. I'm probably going to be using both medium and maybe regular. So let's go with both first of all. This uh, gives it a font name and so on, gives a font weight, which is pretty cool. And now I'm going to upload this font, job done. Let's add another one. So potentially medium, upload, and the last one is going to be regular for me, upload. Now, if you go here, manage fonts, you should be able to see your font and you can manage them from here. You can remove them if you wish and so on. All right, let's close this and let's have a look at the full site editing editor. Go to Appearance, Themes, and from here, you can click Customize. There are a number of ways of going to the Customizer page, but this is one of them. So click Customize, and this is going to open the full site editing. Now, I am zoomed in a little bit, so things might look a little bit blurry from time to time, and it's actually blurry anyway. Let's have a look. Yeah, it's a little bit blurry anyway, because they're probably using a zoom in CSS, uh, I assume. Anyways, so from here, we can design all templates and template parts. Let's have a look at templates. So if we click on this, 
templates are basically all out. As a default, WordPress uses the index template. But if we click here on the plus sign, you will see that you can design a different template. So you can design a specific one front page. You can design some for single blog posts, pages, which is what we're going to be using. So as you can see, when you hover over, it gives you a little bit of text. Displays all static pages unless a custom template has been applied or dedicated template exists. Then we have archives, authors, categories, date, tag, taxonomy, search, 404, single item post, and so on. And you can also create custom templates. Now let's go back super quickly and look at the template part. Template parts are essentially reusable part. For example, on most websites, we tend to reuse or header and footer on pretty much every page. And you can create stuff like, as you can see, a sidebar, header, footer, whatever. There are tons of reusable parts that you can create on your website. Today, we'll mainly look into creating a header and a footer. Now that we understand this part, let's go back and let's click on template. The first template that I'm going to create is going to be the page template. So click plus and then click page. For this one, we're going to choose all pages because I want my template to apply on all pages. And here we go. We have a very basic template. Sometimes if you refresh after this, let's have a look. It seems to add a lot of content. I don't know why it wasn't added as default. It doesn't really matter. So from here, let me quickly walk you through the menus and then we can start building. So from here, we can always go back to the, to the template that we are editing, but let's go back. And, but then from the plus sign here, we can search for patterns, which are pre-made patterns such as, here we go, some featured patterns, posts, as you can see, we have text patterns, gallery patterns, and so on. You get the point. Then we have blocks, which is what we're going to be using the most. And blocks are basically stuff like paragraphs, headings, lists, quotes, images, galleries, buttons, widgets, and so on. And in the media, we pretty much have the images that we uploaded earlier. And that's pretty much it. So from here, let's close this and let's have a look at the next one. So the list view. The list view is what we're going to be using quite a lot throughout this video. And this is essentially how your website is built. Now, normally, a website is built with sections. For example, a header section. We have a query loop in here and a footer. So these are three different sections and inside them we have different parts, different blocks, such as a group, a row, spacer, uh, inside the row we have a logo and so on. Now here on the right side is where we have the create block theme exporter, which we're going to be using later on. So we'll be able to export our theme and then you can pretty much reuse it on any website. Let's close this. And then we have the settings, which is what we're going to be using quite a lot. So from here, we have template settings and block settings. So we don't get anything in the block because I haven't selected one. But if I was to select the navigation block here, you see that suddenly we're getting a lot of options. So we're getting the list view here. Then we're getting settings, which is kind of like the layout, uh, display and so on. And then we're getting styles. So styles are basically your colors, uh, topography, dimensions and so on. That's more or less it. Now, the last thing that I wanted to show you inside here is the styles. It's kind of like your branding, your topography, colors, and layout. So we're going to have to change all of that. And also there is a little hidden icon here, kind of hidden, which is our style box. So if I click on this, you will see, if I close this over quickly, you will see a lot of the elements that uh, we could use on our website. For example, headings, paragraphs, lists, quotes, code, preformatted code, uh, pull code, table, and so on. Inside here, we have media stuff like images, galleries, audio, covers, and we have the buttons, columns, groups, and so on. There is quite a bit. And we have widgets, theme settings, and so on. So we're going to be pretty much starting from here and develop our website. If you go back to everything, don't select anything on the screen. Let's start by building or branding. The first thing that we look at is the topography. If we click on this, as you can see, we have a couple of elements. The text element is the first one that we can look at. And from here, we can change the topography. 
Now, as you can see, the current font is the default one. I'm not sure what it is. From here, we can change it. So instead of using the system font, I'm going to be using the Wix font that we downloaded earlier. And as you can see, it already changes. From here, you can always change the size of the font if you wish, the appearance, which is basically thin, light, uh, regular, and so on. Now we have links. I'm going to do the same for links. I'm going to change it to this one here. Everything else looks good. You could remove the underline from here, as you can see, but I don't really mind the underline the links. I'm going to leave that. Then we have the headings. For the headings, you have pretty much two options. You can either change the font from here for all of them. So maybe medium. And if you go to text, you should see, did I not add bold? Hmm. Okay. Uh, maybe I didn't add the bold, which is a little bit strange, but okay. We'll go for medium in this case. For the headings, you can change the font from here. You can make the letters capitalized if you wish, smaller, and so on. I'm going to leave it as the default. And also, you can look into each individual heading individually if you wish to. And you can change stuff like the line height and so on. If you go back and if you look at the buttons, from here, if we go to media, now design. From here, let's change the button to be the Wix display font and let's change it from pixels to rem. So maybe I can put it as 0 0.9. All right, make sure that you save your changes and let's go back. Let's go back. And now let's look into the colors. From here, we have a palette. On the palette, we have a couple of default colors here and couple of default gradients, which is pretty cool. Now I want to add custom colors for this theme. So if you go here on the customs, click on the plus sign, and then you can select the colors that you want. So first of all, I'm going to be adding a yellow color, which I'm going to call, I don't know if this needs to be unique, whether this is already taken, if you know what I'm saying. So potentially, so what I'm going to do just in case is FSC and then yellow. You can call it whatever you like. Let's add another one. This is going to be almost black. So just outside here. And I'm going to call it FSC black. One more. And this is going to be a very creamy color, as you can see here. And then this is going to be called FSC cream. Okay. Save this. Let's go back. And from here, we can change some of the colors globally. So for example, the background color is what I want to change. I can change it. And as you can see, it makes a change straight away. Um, so I'm going to leave it as this one here. Let's go back. Text. I'm actually going to leave it as black. I'm going to leave it to this one here. Instead, let's go back. And then we have the links. Select them as FAC black. For the hover, maybe we can do something extreme. I'm going to go with the yellow. That might be a little bit extreme, but it doesn't matter. Then for the headings, I'm going to go with black. And for the buttons, I'm going to go with all custom. For the text, it's going to be black. And for the background here, it's going to be all custom yellow. Okay, let's go back. And I think we're almost done here. The last thing that we can look into here is the layout. And now this is going to be basically the dimensions, the width of your area. So for example, if I go back to my Figma design super quickly, I click on my design and if I look into it, so this is where my content is going to start. So if I create a square super quickly, so this is how wide my website is going to be. And I can go to, and I can go here and have a look. So it's 1544. This is how wide my website is going to be. So I'm going to be using that number for the content and the wide content. Now this allows you to basically have two options for narrower content and the white content, but I'm not going to be using this in this video. You also have something called block spacing here, which you can modify. Sometimes it's pretty useful. Sometimes it's pretty annoying, but you'll get used to it, I guess. So I'm going to leave it as default and show you ways of going around this. Make sure that you save your changes. Let's go back, click on blocks. One thing that I want to change is definitely the paragraph. So I'm going to go to typography and maybe put it as, let's have a look. One point, ooh, I don't know. I am zoomed in. Let's have a look. That's actually looking decent 1.6. So I'm going to leave it as that. So make sure that you go around here 
and change everything that you don't like. Save this and let's have a look at the first problem that we're going to get. So if you go to text super quickly, as I showed you earlier, we can modify the headings to whatever font size we wish. But unfortunately, we can't make those fonts responsive, which is a pain. So if I scale down, you will see that they're not responsive and that's not great. And as you know, the Gutenberg blocks don't really have many options for responsive design. So we're going to have to fix this. And this is where the first hack comes from. So save your changes once you're happy. Go to export, make sure that you name your team and put all the description. I'm going to put new and then export. This is going to export a zip file for me. And now let's go back to Laragon. Close this root. So from here, I'm going to go FSC services, WP content themes. And here is the theme that we were just working in. So I'm going to create a new one. FSC services. And I'll just put dash new. Inside this folder is where I'm going to extract everything. And this is going to be our new theme. I wanted to give a quick explanation of why I exported the theme from the create block team plugin and created a new one out of it. And the reason for this is because originally I tried to edit the theme created by create block team. I couldn't update a couple of things. And I don't know whether some things are saved into the database because if I open the theme.json file, you will see that a lot of the things that I added are missing. Like they're not here, like the colors, uh, topography and so on. But when I export the theme, which is here, and if you look at the JSON file, you will see that the palette, the colors are here, the layout is here, the space in the topography, and so on. And that's why I created a new theme out of it. So that's pretty much why I did it. Okay, now if we open the theme.json super quickly, you will see that most of the work is already done for us. And the reason I'm going through this and I'm creating a new theme is because I don't want to mess up anything. I want to start clean. So we are starting with a clean theme here and I'm going to be adding custom code uh, as we need. It's not going to be much. This has already saved us a lot of time, as you can see, and I'll walk you through this in a second. So essentially, we have a couple of parts and you can add a lot more to be fair. But uh, as you can see, let me, uh, which one, sorry, styles, template parts and settings. All right. Essentially, we have three main parts, the settings, which are basically stuff like the palette, which we just added. We created them. We have the layout, which we also added. We have some spacing in here, which you can add more options to. And you have the topography. So this is already added for us. It saved us a lot of time. What else do we have? Let's have a look at styles. So styles is another section. And this is basically where you can style different blocks. So for example, inside blocks, you can style the paragraph. You can style, I think they're quite a lot. Let me just do this. And as you can see, you can start the core archives, audio, avatar, buttons, and so on. So if we modify them earlier in the style book, they would have been added in here. But since I left most of them as default, that's why we didn't get more. Uh, we have the colors. We have elements such as buttons, headings, links, topography, and so on. And we have some template areas for the header, the footer, and also a very important bit in here is the schema. This is basically what does the auto complete. So if I was to do, let's say inside, I don't know, inside the element, if I was to do double quotes, you will see that is auto completing for me. It tried me the option. So let's say H1, inside H1, I have border. I can change the border, color, CSS, dimension, filters, outline, shadows, and so on. Um, and we're going to be doing this. So let's save this. And let's go back to our website and let's go back. Let's go back. And now we go to appearance and let's select our new theme here. Activate. Now, before we start any development work, what we can do is if we go back to the website, navigate to the root folder where we have WP config. And from here, if you open the file, scroll down to the bottom, somewhere on the bottom, 
where we have WP debug. Turn that to true. And this is going to help you every time you make an error, it's going to show you at the top of your website. And also potentially it might help with caching issues. So if you save this, the other thing that we want to do is let's look at the styles super quickly. Let's go back to WP content themes, the FSC services team here. As you can see, we have style.css. Let's open it. So this contains details for theme, the name, which appears here in the editor, as you can see, and so on. But when we visit the actual website, if I refresh super quickly, everything is working well so far. But if I was to go to this style.css and if I was to do, let's say, body, and let's say I wanted to change the background color for some reason, let's change it to red. And in fact, let's make it important. Just to prove a point, if I go back and if I refresh, you will see that it's not taking any of the styles. What we need to do is go back and create a functions.php file. So new file, text file, and then functions.php. Okay, let's open this file and it's going to be empty. Inside the functions.php, the first thing that you want to do is start PHP like so. And inside here, all we want to do is enqueue the style.css. So I'm going to paste a little comment in queuing styles. And to save time, I'm going to copy and paste the function that does that. So here it is. Make sure that you can pause the video and just add this. And this is going to work for you. Basically, also change the names if you wish. It doesn't really matter. But this enqueues the style sheet for us. And now if I save this, we still have the body background color of red. If I go back to the website and if I refresh, you will see that the styles are working which is great. So let me remove the body because we don't obviously want that and save it. Perfect. Let's go back to the website and refresh. And by the way, you might see some errors in here. And this is because I enabled the WP debug. And as you can see, some things are deprecated. And this is actually coming from this plugin here, the create block team plugin, which we don't really need anymore because we exported the stuff that we need. So I'm going to deactivate this. And as you can see, no errors. I am using PHP 8.1, I believe. If I do right click, PHP, yep, 8.1.10. Now, let's go back to Appearance, Editor. And from here, we can start with the header. So inside Template Parts, click on Header and click Edit. There are actually quite a few headers that you can use. Sorry, it's inside the plus sign here. If you put Headers, you might be able to find a few headers that are already pre-built, but today I'm just going to build a very basic one. So if we go to the list view, we have a spacer, which we don't need, so I'm going to delete it. And we have a group. So this group I'm going to click on and under advanced here, I'm going to change this to a header element. Now, for some reason, this I think this adds a block margin on top of it. And there is a way of resetting it. You can go here in block margin let's have a look it could be in fact sorry it's margin so under here margin and i believe that you can just reset the margin yep that's it say that now also just for development purposes i'm going to change this to another color maybe this one here just so we can see we'll change it back in a second and if we go under the group we have a row and inside this row we have the site logo which is fine but we also have this group which contains the site title, tagline. Let's remove this. For the logo, I can click here and upload mine. Here it is. And for the navigation, at the moment, it's actually just picking up the pages that we created early in this tutorial, which is absolutely fine. But from here, I want to change the order and this is actually using page list instead. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this and oops, Navigation menu successfully created. Okay, it's removed now. So let's add the first item and I'm going to go with page link. And this is going to be home, like so. I'm going to add another one. And by the way, you might be tempted to use this home link, but um, we're going to have some problems with this if you use it. And I'll show you why. All right, let's add about, like so. Let's add services. Oops, page link, sorry. How it works. 
write perfect save this from here i am zoomed in quite a bit but if i change it to the default one that's actually looking pretty cool but from here you can edit some of the settings for example the mobile menu the orientation you can change it to whatever you like and also you can change the styles so for example for the text you can change the color which we'll actually have to do so i'm going to change it to white and what else do we need the block spacing you can also change to make it to whatever you like i'm going to reset it because i like the default and that's pretty much it look into the background the sub menus and so on now if we go to the settings you will see this display from here you can choose how your mobile menu displays so if, if i go down to mobile you will see that we're getting this mobile menu let me zoom in and then from here you can pretty much change it to whatever you like there are not many options and also if you click on it you will see that this is looking kind of pretty bad and we're gonna have to do some custom css in order to make this work in a second so let's close this and and let's look into it now it's actually pretty hard to visualize how our menu looks like so what i'm gonna do is save it let's go back to wordpress let's go back to our template part page and from here i want to add it to the top so from here i'm going to remove this one remove the bottom one as well and i'm going to add a new one search for header and just drag this in well try to drag it um okay here we go he added it to the bottom so choose and then scroll back to the bottom choose and then here it is so i'm going to add this i'll make sure that this is at the top wait for this to be removed come on here we go move at the top save it and let's preview our website okay not so bad the first thing that i want to do is 10 pixels of space on each side and also i want to move this in the middle so in order to do this i'm going to click on the let's go back to editing or header here click on the header edit and now let's continue so edit so first of all let's click on the group here and let's go to styles let's go to padding unlink this and do 10 pixels to the left sorry right and 10 pixels to the right to the left like so now i also want to make this in the middle of the screen so let's go to so layout is in a blocks use content width that's correct uh, maybe we need to put group inside the group let's try that so group drag it select this one here and now if we drag this group outside and if we drag the row inside well let's try here we go now hopefully if this is set to inner block use content width save this and the other one is also set as the same you will see that it did move but the reason that it's not working well is because i'm zoomed in okay so potentially it was probably it was probably fine the way it was let's try without the second group no okay so the second group does make a change there unless hmm, yeah the second group does make a change i think unless we so let's let's do it like this refresh and we're good to go now if we look at the design super quickly you will see that our header is always on top of this hero image so we need to do that let's go back to the header and let's remove the background color first of all because that's gonna get in a way so I'm going to go to styles and deselect the background color first of all. It will look a little bit odd now. It's going to be hard to edit. But there is not much we can do about that. If we were to select in this group first of all and go to settings, you'll see that there are some options for positioning such as sticky, but there isn't a position for fixed or absolute yet. Instead, I'm going to click on this and I'm going to add a custom class on it. 
So on the settings, advanced, click on here, yeah, additional CSS classes. So I'm going to call this one FSC custom header. And I hope that you can see, here we go. And copy this and save. So now if we go back to the website, as you can see, the header is all working fine, but we need to position it absolute. So I'm going to go to the CSS and inside here, we're going to put FSC custom header and then position. It's going to be absolute. Zero, left, zero, right, zero. And I want to put the Z index to be at least two. So it's on top of the other stuff. So if I go back, you should see that I did control shift and R to refresh. And you should see that the header is now on pretty much on top of this section, which is exactly what I want. Now, the other thing that we need to solve is the mobile menu. I didn't really prepare for this, but if we inspect this and if we go down to mobile super quickly, and if we click on the menu, which is here, oh, okay, that's not so bad. Potentially you could add a custom class and just move everything to in the middle maybe, or just move a little bit from the right side. So what you can do, click on the menu here, navigation, let's go to settings, click on advanced and let's give it a class name, maybe main nav, main nav, copy this save save and now if we go back to the website here when we toggle the menu let's see where it is i need to inspect it and when we toggle the menu we're getting this class here is menu open and has model open which we can use in our advantage to style this and by the way here we go i refreshed and the style that i just added is here main nav so that's outside the so that's here and if i open it then we have another div with this is menu open. Okay, cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this menu nav, and then I'm going to do is menu dash open. And then I'm going to use the container, which is, sorry, it's this one here. Block navigation container is what I could use. Yeah, I'm going to use this URL here. So this is going to be UL with the class name of this. And let's say we just do padding right of 20 pixels for this example. And font size was already good enough, but you could potentially do that as well. So let's refresh, open it. Yep. And as you can see, there is a little bit more space. So yeah, and pretty much you can change this to however you like, but this is already looking okay. It's not perfect, but it works. And that's pretty much our header done and it's going to look much better when we add stuff below it. All right. One thing that I totally forgot to do is the active links. So at the moment you can't see anything because of the background, but if I edit site super quickly and if you go to template header, edit header. Now let's super quickly give this a background color of this one here, for example, and save. So what I want to show you is that at the moment you don't really know on which page you are so if i i'm on the about page and it doesn't it's not really highlighted and if i go to the services page the same thing i don't think that there is a proper way of doing this but if you right click and inspect the elements and if you go to one of the links for example the about this i'm going to put this at the bottom if we go to the about this page for example and if we inspect the element, you should see a class name of current menu item. So we can use this class name in order to somehow highlight this link. So if I was to copy this, and we can also use the WP block navigation link if you want to make it super specific. And then inside there we have a link. So for example, somewhere around here where we have on navigation, I'm going to, let me zoom in. I'm going to paste the current menu item and the WP block and both of those are class names. So if I put dot and put this one here, and if I put another dot, it means that whenever they're together in our HTML, we can, we can start them. And then I can say, well, we want to start the link inside, which is a, and inside here, I will be doing my styles. Uh, we can also put a little navigation comment here, just so we know where all navigation styles are. 
So for this example, to make it super uh, basic, we can do border dash bottom, but then the border can be two pixel solid and just let's put red for now. So if I go back and refresh, I did control shift now because it wasn't refreshing. And now, as you can see, we're getting the border underneath. I could potentially use one of the variables from the body. So from here, let's say we can maybe use the FSE yellow. I think that would be pretty cool. So I'm going to copy this variable and then go back to my styles. And instead of red, I'm going to do variable and then paste the variable of yellow. Okay, now we could do the hover and I'm going to copy this. But in this case, obviously the current item menu won't exist on the other items because they won't be selected. So I can remove this and I can just do potentially hover and then do the border. Maybe we can do it on the link and then we hover the link and then we add border at the bottom. So let's save this and let's have a look. Refresh. The hover won't work because I've selected the, the device toolbar here. So I'm going to unselect it. And as you can see, the hover is working, but it's kind of like pushing my element a little bit at the top. And there are a couple of ways of solving this, but what I'm going to do super quickly, I'm going to grab this link here and I'm going to say border bottom and I'm going to put as two pixels solid transparent. It's because it's messing with the height. I believe that this is going to make it work. And if I refresh. Now, that's cool, but we potentially need the A as well. So let's save this. And as you can see, now we have hover on all items. And if I go to services, the services is now highlighted because it has that current menu item class name. And now we can go back and remove the background. So select the group, background, remove it, save. All right, and now we're finished with the header. Now, the next thing that I want to do is the footer. So for the footer, let's go back. Make sure you save everything, by the way. Click here, click back and click footer. Click edit footer. And from here, we can edit this footer. By the way, there are also other footers that you can use. Buttons and then footers. There's so many from here, but let's develop a custom one super quickly. List view super quickly, then click on this. Go to advanced, click on footer, save. Now this is going to have a style of black background, but the text is going to be white and the links are going to be white. Now, was there a logo here? No. Inside this group, we have a paragraph. So I want to add the logo as well. So I'm going to add logo and drop it in. Let me zoom in. I'm going to make this a lot smaller. Whoops. And if I click on the list view, we can go here inside this group and create a row. So let's click a row, add it. And then inside this row is where I'm going to be adding everything. So let's just drag them in. And then if you click on this row, then you can do orientation down vertical and then justification center. So I think that's going to look pretty cool. Save it. And also on top of this, I'm going to add a couple of columns. So let's add column. These columns are going to be free and I'm going to move the columns above this. Perfect. Inside here. So let's just add a new heading. And this heading is going to be called about. Let's change the color to white. And let's make sure that this is a tree. And then inside here, I'm going to create a new menu. So this is navigation. And then instead of using the main primary navigation, what I'm going to do is create a new one by clicking here. So block list view and then create new menu. And inside here, I'm going to create a page link. And for example, we can do about services, maybe how it works rates and uh, maybe contact here we go now this menu if we click on the settings here the orientation needs to go down and we can disable the overlay menu for mobile so let's click that and also the 
space in between is a lot more than I want, so I can just change it from the block space in here and save. Now we can do exactly the same thing for the other column, so I can do Control Shift and D to duplicate this and just copy, copy twice like so. And then I can do the same thing for this. I can create another menu, copy in here. And then for, let's say this is going to be company. And let's say that this is going to be contact. And inside the contact, I'm just going to add a paragraph, which is going to say Piccadilly. Maybe this can be a link to a Google map. We can embed the Google map, but I don't really want to do that because it's just a waste of uh, resources, I guess. So instead, I'm going to use a nice image that I've prepared. And then I'm going to use it like so. And then you can link this to your Google map by adding a link from here. Save it. And now let's go back to our website. And as you can see, we're only getting the header, but we also need the footer. If I was to go to edit site, templates, page, edit the page, all we need to do is here, we need to add the footer. So in fact, I'm going to remove this query loop and let's add the footer. Drag the footer in, choose, choose, and then here is the footer. Save it. Make sure that it works. I'm going to zoom out and here we go. It works. So we're getting the header and the footer and everything in between is going to be the content of each page. So it does look a little bit odd at the moment, but if I was to edit the home page, for example, so this is the content, right? This is the content on the home page, but at the moment we are not getting it from here. This is because if we go to the template inside here, is where we need to add the content. So plus, and then this is going to be post. Let's have a look. I think, yeah, it's post content. So I'm going to drag this and this is basically going to fetch the content from all pages. I will show you how it works in a second, but also I want to wrap this in a group. Just add a group. Uh, this group is going to, contain everything and also this group i want to reset the inner blocks use content and we'll see how this goes so now if we go back to the website we're getting the home content if i was to go to the contact page and edit it let's just put an h1 h1 sorry heading this is the this is the contact page refresh and as you can see, this is the contact page. Cool. And the last thing that I spotted, if we go down, you will see that we're not getting the space again. So what I'm going to do is go back to the footer, the main group here, click on edit styles, unlink the padding, right is going to be 10 pixels, left is going to be 10 pixels and save. So that will make it a little bit better when we're mobile, at least a little bit. All right. Now that we have this done, let's edit the home page so i'm going to close all of these and let's edit the home page super quickly so what i want to do is let's look into the topography so let's remove here everything from the home page and let's create a bunch of h1 tags so i'm going to do heading slash heading and this is going to be heading one and i'm going to do Control shift and d to duplicate so one two three four so this is going to be heading one, two, three, four, five, and I believe there is one more, so six. Okay, so let's put this as H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, and H6. If I save this, and if I preview the website, you might see that these headings are not responsive which is not ideal and that's why i had to export the website create this json file here so we can do them manually let me show you how this is going to work in my design i pretty much have so i have the minimum size for the font on mobile and i also have the maximum size for desktop and the way i've calculated this is by using this calculator here which i'm going to open and i've already calculated everything but on smaller screens the base font size is set to 16 
and the minimum screen width is set to 400 and as I showed you earlier we set the maximum screen width from our website to be 1543 so that's why I'm adding it here and the base font size is going to be 19 I've added all steps small base medium large XL XXL and so on and this creates these responsive fonts for me with the CSS clamp tool. So what I've done basically is I've copied this. Let me copy it to a notepad, paste it into a notepad. Let's open the JSON file. Yeah, theme.json. And inside element, we can use those in order to make all fonts responsive. So inside here, I can do H1, as you can see. And for the H1, we can do typography. Here is the last option. And then inside typography, we can do font size. And for the font size, we can basically just do the clamp size. So for the H1, it's going to be this one here for me. In fact, we just need this. Copy, paste. And I would also change the line height, for example. So line height. And let's say we put this to 1.4, right? And what I would do is copy this and do it for the rest. So this is going to be H2. And I would change the H2 to this one here. Copy, paste. And before we do too many of these, save it. And let's go back to the website and refresh. And as you can see, heading one and heading two have changed. And if I make the browser smaller, they also resize, which is amazing. So this is how I was able to, to make the font responsive. So I'm going to copy and paste the code for the rest. Copy, and we have H2. And after H2, I'm going to have H3, 4, 5, and 6. That's it. Save it. Let's go back refresh cool now we are getting a problem and the reason i've done it this way is because as you can see now all h3 tags here are pretty huge but in some cases you might want to have an h3 heading that looks like h4 for example and that's why i'm going to be adding custom font sizes as well so let me show you how we can do that so this time we're going to go back to the theme.json let's go to the top and let's see this is going to be inside settings maybe underneath the spacing yeah underneath the spacing we can do okay we already have topography so and inside topography is where we're gonna have to add the new one and this is gonna be font size sizes okay font sizes click on this and this creates an array inside this array is where we can do curly brackets and then inside here there are a couple of methods of doing this, but what I'm going to do is use the fluid method. In order to be able to use the fluid method, which we can set a maximum number, let's say the maximum for this one is going to be 0 0.89 rem, and then the minimum min is going to be 0 0.8 rem, and then we can give it a name for this custom font size. So name. This is going to be small slug is going to be small uh i don't know whether i need to make this unique so i'm going to do it anyway better save than sorry and then size is going to be the small size so in this case it's going to be this and save now this probably won't work and this is because we need to add another option here which is fluid and we need to set it to true otherwise it won't work i don't think that it will true save it okay so technically speaking if i go back to the website refresh everything is working well but now if i wanted to change these to my custom font let's go and edit the let's refresh on the footer and now let's select the the about here and as you can see we have only one font which is awesome which is the small font so i'm gonna have to do this with the other ones and what i've done is literally i just use the same thing as here and i just use the name small base medium large excel xxl xxxl awesome so let me show you if you go back basically pretty much copy this sorry copy this here the curly bracket with obviously with a comma so you put comma and then you copy it and then you just change the names i'll show you so i'm gonna paste a few and feel free to pause the video uh, make sure everything is working fine okay so we have the small one that i just created we have the base one 
we have the medium one, we have the large, extra large, extra extra large, and then XXXL. So that's it. Save this. And if I refresh one more time, for example, the footer, for example, I can click on about here. And now because we have so many options, they've done it on a drop down menu, which is great to be fair. And now we can select, I don't know, large or oh, no, that's too large, medium. Perfect. So now let's select medium, medium, save this. Now we have responsive fonts and we can select whatever heading we want with whatever size we want. If you go refresh, you should be able to see that they're scaling. Perfect. Awesome. All right. Now we have the exciting part. I'm going to close this and I'm going to go back to my Figma design here. Let's close this as well. And let's go here. Now we have the exciting part. We're going to start by building all pages. So starting with the home page and the cover. Just a quick recap. If we go to the FSE here, uh, appearance editor, and then themes and then page, just a quick recap. We have the header. We have a group, which is going to contain the post content, which is basically the content from the pages. And then we have a footer. So essentially if I click on home, we have these. But if I click on contact here, which you probably can see, we have the contact page. Now, the reason I've left this to be full width is because sometimes, just like on the design here, which I'm removed, sometimes we want to make stuff full width and sometimes we don't. So that's why I've left it as free. Let's edit the home page. Click on the logo, edit page, and let's start. Let's remove everything from here. And let's start by creating a group. So slash group, here it is. And then select this one here, the first one. And then inside this group is where I'm going to add a cover. So add cover. And cover is basically going to allow us to add an image and text on top of it. So from media library, I've already added a couple of images. They're definitely not optimized. Three megabytes is fairly large. So let's add that. And inside here, I'm going to add a group instead. So let's create slash group. Whoops. Maybe there is a, maybe there is another way I can maybe do plus group. Add in here. Choose the first one. And then I'm going to put everything inside that group. And this is going to make sense in a second. So I'm going to put the paragraph in here. And if I put, and I'm going to grab some text and put in here. So local repair and maintenance services. And this is going to be an age. One tag. Oh, I don't know why it doesn't look. It looks a little bit smaller than it should. Let's update and let's refresh. Yeah, it looks a little bit tiny than it should. So H1. Maybe we change the appearance from here. Custom uh, reset tool. Yep. Okay. So that works. And also you might want to change this to regular or light. That works as well. And one really cool trick with the cover here is if you select it and if you go to the styles, you can actually change the opacity and it changes the text. It makes it accessible, which is super cool. But what I want to achieve inside here is on overlay, I want to go to gradient and I want to change this to kind of like a black color. And then I'm going to change this as well to a black color. I'm going to change this to, whoops, the gradient here, I'm going to change to 90 and have it as linear. So this, I want to change the opacity to this, but this one is going to be 100%. And also the opacity from here, I'm going to change. So we're getting like a nice gradient here. The next thing that I'm going to do is add a paragraph underneath here. So press enter and type a paragraph. And let's make sure that we center align this and center align this as well. Cool. That's cool. Booking. Obviously, we can link this button to the contact page. 
like so and make sure that is center aligned so middle aligned and there is another one here justify item center and update if we go back to the website super quickly just so we see what's happening uh you will see two things the first thing is that we're getting a little bit of a gap on top and bottom and the second thing is that our section is not forward so let's solve both of those issues so group potentially in a block now we don't need this no. so if we go here if we click on group potentially we don't need this update it okay first problem solved and the second problem i believe that the group that in our template has block margins so if we go to let's refresh the template this is the page template and if i click on the group here that's why i've added it actually pretty much and if i click on styles then i think it might be in the margin okay margin select margin and reset it no margins anywhere save this refresh okay yeah that has worked i'm not sure why there is space underneath here yet so let's have a look it could be even the footer um you know what i think is actually the footer margin block start yep okay so on the footer we'll have to edit that and fix it later on but basically you click on the footer and you reset the margins so let's go back to a home page and here where we have the group the reason i added this is because if you look or website this it's a little bit too long so what i wanted to do is this group allows us to add content width so i'm going to do 850 for example and already this is looking so much better refresh and this is already nice now you could mess with the spacing a little bit typography and so on but that's already good the other thing that we can do is we can either do the uh, height of this cover manually so i can just drag it or there was a way so for example advanced maybe no sorry under styles it's going to be here okay where we have the pixels we can do vh which is kind of like percentage but is based on the window so if i do let's say 90 percent, this is going to take 90 percent of the height of the window so let's have a look and yeah that's looking pretty decent to be fair and if i go down on mobile it's looking good not so bad okay i'm happy with this if i open the designs we have one more issue i want this scroll button to be at the bottom we're gonna have to go back and add it outside this group so i'm gonna create a row or stack whatever it's called and drag in here so inside here is where i'm gonna add a paragraph i don't know if you can see and i'm gonna put scroll oops and also i'm gonna add an image so image and i've already uploaded this image which is like a little chevron icon here it is and we're done so with the row we can click on it and we can do it as a transform to stack and that will stack them under each other then we can do justify item center and they're already in the center now the issue is that i want this to be on top and the way we can do this is by giving this a class name and setting it as absolute for example and making this group a relative so okay i'll show you so select on the stack click on advanced under here let's give it a class name of maybe scroll button copy this and also this needs to be turned into white so oops center line but where's the text text white that's fine update and also this group will need a relative class what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a class literally called relative that i can reuse for an entire website if i need to so relative and update so let's go back to the css and first things first put relative position relative and then for or scroll button i'm gonna do scroll button and this is gonna be position absolute bottom of 50 pixels left is gonna be zero right is gonna be zero and z index will need to be two to be on top of the cover now for testing purposes only i'm going to put a background color 
of red and save. Let's go back. Make sure that you refresh, sorry, save everything and refresh. Okay, we have the scroll here, which is great. There is a little bit of a space between them and I need to link it. So let's go back. And if I click on stack, potentially in the styles, block spacing is what I'm, it's pretty hard to see. I'm really sorry about this, but that has solved the problem. And now I can just link this to the anchor point. So which is the services? If I was to go here, let's create a new group for the services. So group and drag it somewhere around here. I don't know if I did potentially. Uh, it didn't seem like it worked. So group, maybe I click on it. Yeah. If you click on it, it adds it. That's much better. So click on this, click on this. And now we have a group inside the group. We don't want that. We want this to be its own section. Remove it. Uh, yeah, it's pretty hard to move from time to time. Sometimes you can hold it around here and it works and then you can move it with the arrows. Cool. Now, one little trick here is that if I was to click on this section here and if I go to advanced and if I was to give an HTML anchor, let's say hero, you will see that it adds a name. So <laughs> this is what I've been using in order to name my layers pretty much. I'm not sure if it's a good idea, but it's actually a pretty cool trick that I made up. The same here, we're going to have an anchor, but this one is going to be actually used. So I'm going to go under advanced, going to put this as a section, for example, and let's say services. And now we can link this to the services anchor. So where's the link here? And then we do hash services. Press enter and now this should be linked and maybe we can link the image as well. Um, let's see, um, hash services. Press enter. Okay. Perfect. Uh, you click and it scrolls down to services, but we don't have anything in services just yet. And this link is looking a little bit odd. So if I can change the color of this, that would be great. Link color, white. Perfect. Let's go back to styles and remove the color red. Let's go back. Refresh. Perfect. Should work. If I scroll up, click on it, it works. All right, let's create our services section. So in, so inside the page again here, let's where we have our services group, click on this one and let's start by adding a heading. Services, this heading is going to be an H1. And it's going to be center aligned. And inside here, I'm also going to have a little paragraph, which I'm going to copy and paste here and center align. And just like we have this group here, I'm going to create another one. So excuse me, new one group add in here. And this is going to be so uh, this group is going to be inside this group. And we're going to add everything inside here. And in this group, we're going to put 850. Perfect. Now we could put a little bit of a space. Spacer. I don't know how much I need, but let's say 30 pixels. Refresh. Perfect. That's looking good. Maybe that needs to be moved a little bit more, by the way. So 120. I'm not so sure. Okay, that works. And uh, it would have been nice if this wasn't underlined, but you can change this with CSS. So for this, I'm going to have three columns. Let's go back. Maybe we just create col, drag them down. No, just click on them and then press the three columns, press the three columns. And here we are. Now I need them outside this group. That's what I wanted to achieve originally. And let's put them, let's put them down. There we go. That works. So three columns and each column is going to have, basically is going to be a link to a different service. Let's start with a cover. So this is going to have an image, tap water here. We're going to put plumbing. If I select the cover, if we go to styles, we can change the opacity 
to a darker one uh, or whatever maybe we can make it a little bit cooler by going to full on and then go to overlay gradient make sure that the angle is set to zero all right just do it manually much faster and then if we put this as black and then if we put this to be more opaque that would look pretty cool to be fair but i'm just gonna change it to black something like this will do and that's gonna be it let's make this a little bit smaller and what we can do is link this to a plumbing section of our website by clicking here and then i don't really have i don't really have a plumbing this is spelled wrong as well it's plumbing and i don't really have a plumbing page so i'm just gonna put it as Fleming and then change the link to white. Now the issue here is that the whole section isn't clickable, which is really annoying, but there isn't really an easy way of doing this. So the link is clickable, but everything around it is not. I'm sure that there is a hack that you can do, but it might make it really complicated. Also in my design, I have every single section here with a little border radius. So I want to achieve this as well. In order to do this, if we go back, unfortunately, I don't think that there is a border radius option on this. And even if there was a global one that I can do, hmm, there might be a global one actually. Let me have a look. If I go back to the template here, and if I click on the styles and then the style book, if I click on media and if I click on cover, layout, body margin, uh, all right i don't think that there is um, a border radius in this so what we're gonna do let's close this so what we're gonna do is add a custom class and so click cover advanced and then inside here i'm gonna put services call so a services column and i'm gonna update this let's go to css and inside here we're gonna do services call and then overflow hidden And then border radius of 10 pixels. We could set a custom variable in our team JSON file, but I'm gonna leave this. Let's go back to a page, refresh, and here we go. We have the border radius. So let's duplicate this a couple of more times. Maybe make this you can make this text smaller if you wish, and so on. Let's duplicate this. Control Shift and D if you wish, and then drag control shift and whoops d if you wish and and drag cool so this one is going to be electric this one is going to be decorating we could try to fit one more super quickly let's have a look custom font size custom oops medium okay yeah that could work if i put those as medium so custom font size medium, custom font size medium. It could work. So one more column, duplicate this column here. And we have four columns. I don't know how well this is going to work. So three, put this down. Yeah, almost. Yeah, that works. I'll leave it as it is. And also we need to put the 10 pixels uh, on the left and right. So section here, services, go to styles, padding, left and right is going to be 10 pixels, 10 pixels, and that should be it. All right, let's change the images extremely quickly, and I might speed up this process so you don't have to watch me do it. So replace. Now, if you wish to have another set of columns, you can literally duplicate this, replace the content and update. So now we have a bunch of links in here and that's pretty much it. One thing that I didn't show you is that you can click on the cover here and you can move around how you want the section, which is really cool. And you can also mess around with the fixed background, repeated background. Let's, uh, let's refresh this. 
And let's make this a fixed background for a second. Update it and let's have a look how this works. So, okay, that's a pretty cool effect with a fixed background as well. You can do that if you wish. I'm going to remove it. Let's scroll down. And the last thing that I can see in here is we can do with a little bit of spacing at the top and the bottom. Easy thing to do. Go to the group here. Go to styles. Padding is going to be so top padding. Can I do just five or something or six? And then bottom is going to be the same. And that will make it a little bit better. Okay, on to the next group, which is the Y Earth section. From here, I'm going to create another group. Click on it this time. I've learned my lesson. And now scroll down and click on this. This is going to have a style. First of all, I'm going to change the padding super quickly to the left and the right. And this is essentially going to have a cover for the background. So let's put cover. Let's choose an image. And the image that I want is this one here. Again, two megabytes not optimized, but it's fine. And inside here, I can use another group. So let's do slash group. Choose this. And then inside this group, I can choose two columns. So call and then choose 50-50. And then the section on the left is going to have a heading. This is going to be Y first. And I'm going to have pretty much the same text as above. So I'm going to copy and paste the same text as above. Also, let's create a quick button. So this is going to be request booking. Obviously, from here, you can link it to the contact page. like so and we should be good to go for the right let me remove this text from here remove paragraph let's make this a little bit bigger let's make sure that we have so we have group let's first of all see on the website okay so that's looking good but we want it to be full screen so what i'm gonna do is this needs to be unticked Yep, and that fixes it. And we're getting some padding here. And this is the padding. It actually looks cool to be fair, but this is the padding that I added earlier. So we might need to add the padding on these here. Okay, my fault, remove the padding from here. So reset, whoops, uh, reset all. And maybe we can put the padding on the cover. Is that possible? Yep, okay, the padding can be left and right of them. That should solve my problem. Now let's do the right section. For this, I'm going to have columns. And you can make this a little bit better, but essentially this is going to be two columns and it's going to have, I don't know if it needs to be a heading or paragraph. Let's go with paragraph and I'm going to say quality. This is going to be center aligned like so. And maybe we can middle align it. Perfect. And now we can click on it this column here and we can go to the styles give it a little bit of padding like so and maybe give it a border of let's have a look this golden color one pixel and that's looking pretty cool i think maybe that needs to be bigger let's have a look just have to try um yeah something like this will make it a little bit better and then essentially i won't be able to do the other effects that i wanted to so I'm going to give it a class name of Y as co update him. Let's go back to styles and inside here, we're going to say Y as co box sizing of border box because of the padding and the border that I'm going to be adding. So background color, I'm going to set to RGBA and this is going to be 255, 253, 246 and then the alpha is going to be 0 0.1 like so. And then the background filter is what I wanted to add originally is going to be blur of 1.5 pixels. And then let's give it a border radius of 10 pixels. Save it and let's see what we get. Yep, that's looking pretty good. Maybe you can add an icon on top of it and make it a little bit nicer. But that was the whole idea. The text can definitely be a little bit bigger than it is. 
And now I can literally copy this column. Wow, it's a little bit bugged from here. Um, maybe I have too many, too many lists and I can't see. Is there a scroll? Okay, it's a little bit bugged in here. So right click, no, um, okay. here, here we go, duplicate. And now we can remove this one and update. Now, if I was to refresh, obviously you're not gonna see the CSS changes in here, the, the rounded corners and so on, but that's one of them things that I'm not sure if we are ever gonna get. So refresh and we're getting that. And this is already looking cool. If I was to refer to my design, we have reliable here. And then we can copy these two. So columns, duplicate, and then we can change them to efficiency. Pricing and save. Not so bad. I mean, potentially I would want this to be cut off here, or maybe where we have the columns, I would go to the styles and change the uh, block spacing. So if you toggle this, that might just do the job. Yeah, that might do the job, and uh, that's already looking good. Scale down. Um, let's see. Yeah, not ideal, but uh, it works. So the issue with these is that they look clickable, but I think that's my fault, bad design in here, and we need a lot more space on top and bottom. So if I click on the section, let's go group and padding. Six and nice. That should be a lot better now. Did I refresh? Hmm. Cool. That pattern didn't do anything. All right. That might need some messing around. That's strange. Could it be? Oh, it could be because of the cover. So let's reset this. And then, can I do padding on the cover? Yes, I can. So let's do that. Six and six. A bit. All right. Much better. Maybe a little bit more, but at least it's working. The next section is going to be the testimonial section. So more or less the same as this one here. In fact, I wonder if we can copy this one. So let's have a look. So potentially, this one is going to be YS. I'm going to go advanced and put YS so we know. And potentially, I'm thinking of copying this one. So duplicate the services, move them to the bottom. Nope, no nope, mistake. Okay, uh, we're going to have to do this manually. Move them to the bottom and change the services to testimonials. And now if I click on the group, let's change the background to or yellow background here. Perfect. And now let's change the title. I'm going to leave the text as it is. Obviously you can change that. And now we can remove the columns. So these columns can go. In fact, I'm going to remove these columns as well. And just create new ones. So columns. And I'm going to create four columns in here. Three is the only options, but we'll create four after. This can be outside, like so. And now inside here, I'm going to add some images from Media Library. And I'm going to go with this one first. Make sure that this is center aligned, like so. I'm going to add a paragraph. So this is going to say a great service. Maybe this needs to be a heading actually. So heading and it can be age four and we can make it much smaller. So medium that could work and maybe we can make it light. Yeah, that looks great. And then in the middle, I'm going to add a little bit of text in here. Make sure it's aligned in the middle. And in fact, you could add quote instead of this. So you could do quote. 
and then add it and then make sure that the quote is aligned in the middle and maybe align this in the middle as well and this is going to be Maria here we go so let's remove that improvising as I go and maybe we can even add I've saved a few fake stars so I'm going to add an image media library fake stars from here and just put them in the middle and that's looking great so potentially I could duplicate this four times remove those two and now I can change them super quickly and I will speed up the process so you don't have to watch and we should be back so update we have all the content here refresh and if we scroll down we're getting maybe from the cover there is a bit of a margin let's have a look oh is it the testimonials hmm that's interesting that the testimonials is adding the margin instead we can definitely fix this by clicking on the group here and then it will be block spacing maybe or actually i said margin so margin okay it was margin on this group for some reason um that's absolutely fine and the last thing on the home page we can do the latest articles so let's do a new section can i copy this uh let's copy this so duplicate I'm going to call this one something else. Let's say articles. Click on the group. Let's remove the background color. Like so. I'm going to change this to your latest articles. And this time I'm going to put this on the left side and make it so it's a little bit smaller. So the maybe we can put it as the large font and this needs to be outside the group now so around there and i'm going to remove this the space i'm going to keep but i'm going to remove this group now these columns they can go away remove and i'm going to put if i can i'm going to put the query loop so query loop okay from here we can either start blank or we can choose how we want to display our posts so there was another way of choosing i think um but oh that's looking pretty cool but essentially i want to do something like this or this okay i'm gonna go with this one here and as you can see it's taken a lot of space here but if we click on this grid view that will make it a little bit now we have three columns and you can add more but we don't really have any more content so free will do the job and from here you can start editing everything so for example we can add this as h3 and we can also make this a lot smaller than it is so maybe medium perfect the images themselves are not so bad i might just keep them the way they are and from here we can do read more dot 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 or you can even put an arrow the date is cool let's have a look at how this works okay um for some reason this is not appearing now the reason for this is if we go back if we click on the query loop from here i believe that if you untick this inherit query from template and then if you click post newest to oldest that's all cool let's update it i think that this is going to work now yep perfect now this is probably the ugliest section of the entire website and for some reason this image has rounded corners and the other ones don't but that's probably my fault yeah that's how i saved it so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna move this super quickly i'm gonna move it below the image like so that's already so much better i mean that should make it a little bit better maybe we can remove the date or put the date around there and let, remove those separators and that should make it a little bit better okay that's much much better 
let's have a look at the images super quickly. What I, I wanted to add border radius in them. Okay, here we go. For the images, we can actually add border radius of 10 pixels. And that solves my issue. Now I don't have to re-upload uh, the image. So these are all clickable, but obviously we need to edit the template which does the post. And as you can see, this is going under blocks and then the title here. Cool. That's going to be pretty much everything from the homepage. And now we can concentrate on creating our contact page. Our contact page is basically going to use exactly the same template as this, which is going to make it super easy. Now, if we go to any of those pages, they're using exactly the same template. If we go to contact, you will see that we're getting the header. It's kind of hard to see, but we are getting the header and we're getting the footer. So from now on, it's going to be super easy to build pages. Let me show you. For example, if we edit this page on another tab here, we edit in the contact page and let's quickly open the home page. What I can do is copy this section here. So this is the hero section. I'm going to copy it, copy blocks. And now if we go back to the contact page from here, let's remove everything. And now if I right click, sorry, if I click on this and paste, paste styles, no, um, maybe control and V. Let's see Control and V. Okay, Control and V does the job. And now contact page is gonna start looking good. Let's change this to contact. Maybe you can have a little bit of text. Remove the button in this case. Let's remove it one more time. Remove this space as well. And now if we click on the cover here, and if we go to the styles where we have the maximum height, now we can actually change this to pixels and make it a little bit smaller. In fact, 430 pixels should be fine. Let's go back to the contact and refresh. And now just like that, we created a super quick contact page. We can, of course, change the image from here, replace um, open media library. Let's choose this guy here, update, and that's it. Now to make this contact page a little bit better, we can go here under group, we can come under styles, and for example, we can give it a border of four pixels, yellow. Uh, can I do it bottom only? Unlink everything. Okay, reset that. Now, unlink everything, yellow border, four pixels to the bottom. And now that's going to look. Oh, I've done it on the home page. Sorry. Let's do that on the contact page as well. Sorry about that. So styles, go down to border, unlink, yellow, four pixels, and update. That's looking so cool. Maybe we can add it as six. And now I can update the home page as well. Two, six. All right, just like that, we have our home page and the contact page cool now let's finish our contact page if we go here underneath this group we can create another one under here we can create columns so we can split this into two the first one is going to be a heading of where to find us so find us or something like this and then i'm gonna copy and paste the address copy and paste there and from here you can do pretty much whatever you like for example uh, social icons here we go and for the social icons you can click the plus sign and you can choose from here so i don't know let's choose something super quickly mastodon linkedin twitter youtube whatsapp whatever you wish and then you need to give them links obviously i don't have links for them so i'm just gonna put empty links for the demo otherwise they won't appear and save this this finders is a little bit too big maybe i can make as h3 and save on the right side here we can add a contact form so let me refresh super quickly that's already looking good so let's add a super quick contact form and in order to do this let's go back to the wp admin let's go to plugins we're gonna add a new plugin and from here i'm gonna do contact Contact form is a very basic one that we can use. It's very popular, so I'm going to install this. 
activated. And now from here, where we have the settings, you can pretty much create contact form however you like. For example, this one is going to have your name, email, subject, and your message. Um, then you have some settings here for the email and a few messages like you thank you for your message and so on. So we can use this, the default one. If you go back to editing the contact form, let's refresh this. And now inside here, we can click on the plus sign and click on and search for contact. Here we go. We have contact form seven. Select the contact form one and now update. If you go back, you will see that we're getting the contact form, which is awesome. Now we're also getting this scroll button from the homepage, which we need to remove. My fault. So inside this group, we have this stack. Yep, let's remove that. And we're done. One of the things that you cannot do with a JSON file at the moment is style things such as input. So we're going to have to do this manually. If you go back to all style.css, I already know the classes of contact form seven. So I'm going to help you out straight away here. And essentially I'm going to copy and paste them. So essentially the, the very basic is WP contact CF seven for WP for WordPress contact form seven. And then we select all the input with the text field. And then we do the same for the email here and the text area. So from here, we're putting the font size to one rem, the background color to be white. I'm putting a little bit of a border to make it a little bit more readable and I'm adding board box sizing. So when we add padding, it doesn't affect the width. The width is always hundred percent. And then for the button at the bottom, we're pretty much doing the same thing. I'm just changing the background color here. Save this. Refresh. And as you can see, this is actually looking fairly presentable. And of course, feel free to make it a little bit better. And potentially we need to put a little bit of padding on the left and the right, and we should be good to go. So this one here, uh, yep, uh, we can do it here. Unlink, so left is going to be 10 ish pixels, right is going to be 10 pixels, 20 pixels would have been better, but so good. Yep, that's much better. So we have a decent contact homepage and we have a homepage. Now we can do exactly the same thing for most pages. So for example, I can literally copy this group here, copy block. And now if we go to our templates or appearance, uh, editor, yep. And then templates from here, we can literally create a new one, let's say 404 and I can remove everything from here. I mean, you can add the heading, I guess, and paste it. And instead of this, we can put 404, put some text in here. Sorry, this page does not exist or whatever. And then you can click on it, make this VH of I don't know, 100, whatever. And now you have a simple 404 page, which I'm not sure how to trigger. Let's have a look. Maybe. Can I trigger it like that? Yep, here we go. So we have 404 page here, just like that. Super simple. We can also do the same thing for the blog post. So let me have a look super quickly. Um, single, this is for the blog post. So if I click on this, we're going to create a new one. And for this, we can remove this, remove this and remove this. So let's start with a header, like so, choose it. I'm going to choose my header and let's paste the cover that we copied from the contact page. And inside here, what we can do is replace this with the actual post title. If we do post, you will see post title, put this in the middle. And then we also need the post content somewhere. So post post now come on slash post post content is the one that I'm looking after okay let's go back to the website 
click on one of the posts in here cheap painting services and as you can see we're getting the content also this can come from the original article so if you click on the cover if i can find it now replace use featured image here we go and now that's going to use the featured image and we need to put this inside so potentially we can create another group like so and then that group if i can get it out oh no it's gone into the header that group needs to go down select this move the content inside it and as long as this group has inner block use content width we're probably going to be fine yep so we are getting a little bit of an issue here title has changed i think the image is so small for this but what we can do is obviously change the title to whatever color we wish from here maybe we can do the color to be a lot darker and now this can be whiter and the link is a link i'm not sure anyways regardless inside here you can do a lot more so you can do post title i'm sure that there was a date post date yep you can do that put it in the middle make sure that this is also white save it and now you will see that this is working we are getting a little bit of problem from the template here i believe so this needs to be reset the margins of this needs to be reset i think things like this you're just gonna have to mess around a little bit and get it to work and that just works if you install the seo plugin used you can also do breadcrumbs and so on but this is where your content is going to go uh, if you edit the post you can literally write your post in here heading hello world and save now if i was to go to another post you will see that everything is dynamic so this one here everything changes the date changes well it's the same date but everything else changes the text changes and so on the last thing i didn't do here is the footer so we might as well add it so let's add a new footer and choose choose footer let's make sure that this is at the bottom so that's going to be everything from this tutorial i hope that you found it useful it is a little bit hacky i know but hopefully things will get better thank you very much for watching consider liking the video comment below and hopefully i'll see you in the next one